were in Toledoth 1. You say, what? <laughs> we're in Toledoth 1. The book of Genesis in the Hebrew Bible was divided into 10 Toledoths or sections. We, our English Bible is divided in 50 chapters. But the Hebrew Bible was written in Toledoth. The book of Genesis by Moses was written in Toledoth. Specific sections. We're in Toledoth 1, which is Genesis 2-4 on your paper. Genesis 2-4 through the fourth chapter, the end of the fourth chapter. And that's where we're headed, hopefully, when we get through the end of the first Toledoth, I'll probably take a break from Genesis and do something else. In the second chapter, in verse 17, Adam and Eve were told not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, for the day they ate, dying, they would die. In the Hebrew, they used the word muth twice. They used it as a, a cal infinitive, muth, M-U-T-H, and then they used it in the cal imperfect. When you do that in the Hebrew language, that becomes an absolute. That's absolute truth. Your B English Bible often translates that as surely. So if you looked at Genesis 2.17, they might say, your Bible might say, you will surely die in Genesis 2.17. But in the Hebrew, it says, dying you will die. In other words, there were going to be two deaths involved if they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God said, in the day you eat, dying you will die. <clears throat> the first dying is the idea of spiritual death, and uh, dying you will die, the die is the physical part. In Genesis 5.5, 5, after Adam and Eve ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Adam died at the day, age of 930. 930, according to Genesis 5.5. 5. Now this is interesting. See, we normally, if you go to a, if you go to a funeral or, or go to the graveyard and you look at tombstones, they're going to have two dates on it. Agreed? Birth and death, right? Adam and Eve didn't have a birth. Adam was Adam was created from the earth. And Eve was created from Adam's rib. And they were created adults. They didn't, have a, they didn't have a physical birth. So where did this thing start with? Listen to me now. With Adam's sin. I mean, how did, we, how did, how did God count 930 years out and say, okay, that's the time you die? What, what was his starting count? Adam's sin. We call it Adam's original sin. That's when it started. Now, now look, when does your age start? Physical birth. And do you count it down? Yeah, that's what's on to every human, every human tombstone. That's, that's what's on there. Do you know what your physical birth tells you? Listen to me. Do you know what your visit, you, you know, we call them birthdays. They're actually what? Dying days. They're actually death days, right? You're not going to, you're not going to, you do realize you're, you're one closer, every, every year you use, you're, you live, you're one closer to the grave, right? You're getting, you're, you're, you're living to the end, right? That's why everybody's interested in what, what is the age length? How, how long are people living now? And we're doing pretty good. We're not living well, but we're living longer. You know what your birthday tells you? It tells you that you're in a state of dying. Agreed? 
I mean, everybody knows they could die at any time, any point in any day, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's unusual to go through, if, unless you're in a very small high school, it's unusual to go through high school and not know somebody in the four years that you were there that, that didn't die. If, especially if you're in a pretty good sized high school. I wasn't at a big high school and I knew a kid that, got, that died in it four years I was there. But anyhow, we know that what your birth tells you is that you're under a damning sin. I got a call the other night, which I really loved this call. It was for my granddaughter, Evelyn Jane, named after her grandmother, who explained to me the gospel of, of salvation as clear as anybody could ever explain it, and just said she believed that and is now saved. And the first person she wanted to tell was Grandpa. You talk about making my day. That little heart, that little sweetheart made my day for sure. And she just, I couldn't, she talked so much about how much Jesus loved her and died on for her sins. And I said, well, wh wh what kind of sins would you have, baby? And so she mentioned a few. <laughs> Who knew? I said, well, the greatest one, and she knew this, the greatest one was Adam's sin. It wasn't her personal sins, it was Adam's sin that she was under, Adam. And I thought, and listen, I went like, boy, half the people in the whole world don't know that. But how, how good, that's how good. It doesn't matter, it's whenever they, they awaken in their soul and they go like, listen, I was born dying, now, look, if I get saved, let's say I didn't get saved until I was 23. <clears throat> that was kind of old, apparently, in the South. But I didn't get saved until I was 23. I, I, there was no awakening in my soul for God. I was 23 before I, I even gave a whiff about God. I thought God was a swear word, and I thought Jesus Christ was. I thought these were swear words. I mean, I was told not to say those words. Those were naughty words. You've heard people talk that way, haven't you? Okay, well, so, so, eh. but it, it, by 23, I was awakened to the, to the knowledge of God, the awareness of God, and then I, somebody, as soon as I had that kind of like awareness, somebody shared with me the gospel, and uh, I thought that was ridiculous, and it took me uh, two years to get that under my belt in order to say, I, I want to be saved. But listen, you get saved from Adam's sin. Write this down. Romans 5, 12 through 21. Wherefore is by one man Adam sin entered the world and death by sin. And so Adam's sin death spread upon all mankind. For all have sinned in Adam. So that's the sin that has to be rectified. And people don't know that. They talk to people about their personal sins. you got to be talking to believers to talk about personal sins. And I was proud of my little granddaughter that understood that. I didn't have to explain it. I thought she was going to get it. She, she knew some of this other stuff, but she understood that Christ died because she was under Adam's sin. And I went, wow, that's some good coaching. <laughs> That mom and dad did a job right there. Well, in Genesis 3, 1 through 6, they ate the, unforbidden, the, the forbidden fruit. And watch this. Now watch this closely. One sign of their conscious awareness of the consequences of eating from the tree of knowledge called the transgression, watch this now, was the loss of spiritual innocence. They were created with spiritual innocence. And they were created as adults. Sp spiritual. And when they ate from that fruit, they lost their spiritual innocence. That's what we call it in theology. We call it 
We call it spiritual innocence. Now, and you know this, little kids. Where do you, do you can you find that anywhere, Pastor? Uh, innocence, yeah. Little kids have innocence, don't they? You know what they do? They walk around naked everywhere. It's hard to keep clothes on little bitty kids, right? They, I mean, they, they want to walk through Walmart and everywhere naked. <laughs> They're happy. They're happy. Get these shoes. I Get these clothes off me. Adam and Eve are that way as adults. In, in, in Genesis 2.25, as a young married couple, they were naked, naked and unashamed. That's second chapter, verse 25, as a married couple. You know what happens? You know how you know the awareness of the loss of innocence? They were naked and ashamed. What do you think of that? They weren't naked. I mean, they were naked and weren't ashamed. What happened to cause them to see their nakedness as something shameful? They ate from the knowledge, they ate from the tree that they were told not to eat. In the day you eat, you will die spiritually. And they did. And the awareness of their soul was the loss of innocence in the presence of God and each other. The loss of innocence. Did you know that? Watch this. In the third chapter of Genesis 7 through 11, watch the word naked. It dominates the subject. Watch this now. The eyes, they ate. They, in verse 6, they both ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew, they were consciously aware, that they were naked. Well, look, the last verse in chapter 2. The man and his wife were both naked, and what? We're unashamed. Now we're in a, we're in a third chapter, verse 7, and they're naked and ashamed. What happened? What's the cause and effect? What's the cause and effect? They ate of the tree. Well, right? That's the cause. What was the effect? Yeah, well, how did they identify that? As being naked. Do you understand that? Were they naked before? But they were what? Unashamed. They're naked now and what? Ashamed. All right. I'm just telling you what it says. That is the middle of And then look what they did. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin cloths. They didn't make clothing. They didn't make head covering. They made loin covering. We talked about this last time. Watch this in verse 8. I'm after the word naked. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That's Bible study. And the man and his wife hid themselves. Second clue that they lost their innocence. They're hiding from the presence of God. They once were in the presence of God in the cool of the day, which was a comfort to their soul. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Next time, uh, Patty, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with the Tetragrammaton in here with the word Lord. Hopefully next time. From the presence of the Lord, because she's curious about that, and what, that, that shows growth. Uh, from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord, Lord called to, the, to him, the man Adam, and said to him, where are you? Now do you suppose God knows, you suppose God knows where he is? Yes. Right. He's playing hide and seek with God, and God knows. <laughs> you can never win that game with God, right? <laughs> you never win that game. Where are you? Actually, Horton. Why are you where you are? Absolutely. It's a rhetorical question. That's, I'll say it again. Why are you where you are? That's absolutely what he said in the Hebrew. Did you get that? Say one more time. Why are you where you are? I imagine he said it pretty much like that, don't you? <laughs> They might have chuckled a little bit because they thought they were hid. I was naked, so I, they said, they, I heard the sound of you in the garden, verse 10, and I was afraid. That's the third clue. They're what now? Fearful. You know what, I, you know what these are all signs of? The loss of spiritual innocence. 
because I was naked. See the word naked? So I, I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? And before he could get an answer, he said, have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? See how the word naked all of a sudden dominates in a negative way? Before it, it was naked and it was in positive way, right? It's like that little kid wanting to, everywhere, I, we'll, we'll put some underwear on. <laughs> right? Let me, let me show you a couple of things before I, I have to quit. Gosh, I only got five minutes. Where can I go? Well, let me go to point one. I did point one. I don't need to do that again. Let's go to point two. I really did this. Do you know, this is a point we'll get, and then we'll, we'll take a break today, and I'll come back to this next time. Christ died for your soul, right? Christ died for your soul. Do you have any idea what your soul is? What is your soul? You know what's your being. People, actually, most people will say, well, I know that's my being. All right? Let me tell you what it is. I put it on your paper. You have five apertures to your soul that are important to you to understand. There may be more, but I want you to know five that you have that are important that you can recognize once you know this. Now watch this. It's on your paper. I'm just going to go down. It's on point number two. I'm at point number two. You see, this couple became conscious in their soul that they had lost their spiritual innocence. Agreed? Oh, yeah, this is not about it. Not, I'm not asking for consent. I'm, <laughs> I'm just making a point. Now watch. Here are your five apertures. Consciousness. They have that? Yeah? yeah? Consciousness. Did they know they were naked? Finally. Finally. <laughs> Now, they knew it right away. When they ate, they knew. And God had to ask them that, though, didn't he? They knew they were naked. In other words, they knew there was a sense of loss, a consciousness, awareness of loss. Right? They have a conscience. They have a guilt of the sin of eating. You know how that's identified? Shame. Boy, my mother could get me every time. Uh, Ronnie, do you know what ever happened? I, my mother smoked a lot. I snuck one cigarette out of her pack of Lucky Strikes. One stinking little cigarette. And she says, I'm missing a cigarette at the dinner table. I'm missing a cigarette. And I went, oh, jeez. <laughs> Somebody counts the number of cigarettes in a pack? My mother did. I never thought about doing it, but all of a sudden I thought, the Schultz boys said, let's have a smoke out behind the barn. I don't have anything to smoke. But both your parents smoke. I went, all right. I took one of her lucky strikes, pulled it out, I didn't know there was only 17 in a pack. I never counted cigarettes in a pack. You ever count cigarettes in a pack? I mean, you got to be. My mother counted, apparently counted. She said, I'm missing a cigarette. And so she, she asked Bud, her husband, she said, No, I don't smoke those. He smoked uh, camels. He'd have been off smoking a real one rather than one of those. He smoked a camel. He said, I don't smoke your cigarettes. And she looked over her man. She said, Ronnie. I knew who counts cigarettes. I knew she had me. You know how she got me? Later, I said, how, how did you ever figure that? Did you count them? She said, I thought the pack seemed to one cigarette gone, you could tell, and the pack was a little, the pack was a little, but when I said it, 
I could see it on you. Shame. I was guilty. She could look at me and go like, you're guilty. Man, she could read that. Who does that? Can I tell you, young guys? Mamas. <laughs> and listen, and wives. I can tell you to do that. Mentality, mentality, mentality. Look, they're hiding. They're thinking. What are they hiding from? The present. Now pay, now, pay attention to the words now. They're hiding from the presence of the Lord God. The presence. A sense of presence. That's because this is, you can't find this word Lord God in the first chapter. It's not there. You're going to find it here. You're going to find it in the second chapter and the third chapter. It comes in existence in Toledoth 1. The word Lord God. Boy, is that an interesting study. Mentality. They're hiding from the presence of the Lord. Listen, they're afraid. They're afraid. The mind is working and is producing in them fear. They're afraid. What are you afraid of? I don't know. Sometimes people are afraid of stuff they don't even know. They just know they're afraid. It's a guilty conscience. Volition. They ate. They knew they ate of the forbidden fruit. Did you? And he asked them, he said, did you eat from the tree I commanded you not to eat? And they like, they, they, not, they now knew they had been had like I did when my mother went, I'm missing a cigarette. And I went, oh, jeez. My mother said to me, she said, well, Ronnie, did you smoke it? I went, yeah. Where'd you smoke it? Ah, the Schultz boys and I, there was five boys Shows by design, we had a smoke out, what we call the smoke. <laughs> I don't know, it's probably dead. A smoke out. She said, okay. Well, you know not to do that. And I went, yeah. She went to, she always went one, one day out of a week, she went to pick up groceries and came home. You know what she came home with? She came home with a cigar. And she said to me, well, Ronnie, since you want to smoke. They took me in a little, she put me in a little dinky bathroom that we had. <clears throat> I choked. I threw up. I fainted. And she wouldn't let me out of that room until that whole cigar was smoked. It nearly took me a day. <laughs> and volition. Volition is, <clears throat> volition is where you get all the emotions flowing all over your life. <clears throat> all your emotions fall, all flowing over your life. You need to be aware when it says that Christ saved your soul, you need to be aware of what that is and how God's Word and the Holy Spirit manages that in your life. And over this period as we're moving along, I'm going to explain all that to you. I want to encourage you to come and stay with me a year. Pick out a day you want to come. I teach Sunday at lunch, and I teach on Sunday. Pick a day, come stay with me a year, I promise you. Your life, be based on the Word of God, your life will never be the same. Never, ever be the same. Come spend a year with me. Come spend a year with me. Well, we're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to take the offering. We're going to take a break. Take a 15-minute break, uh, and then we're going to have our annual church conference in the second hour. If you've been with us uh, that, this year, you will certainly want to attend that conference. If you're a visitor, we, if you want to know who we are, you get your visit with us on that. But this is our annual church conference. So let's have a word of prayer. The men will take the offering. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come today to study with us. To take part in the Eucharist, we're thankful that we have the freedom. I thank you, Father. We fly this flag and we salute it because of your grace upon America. Your grace upon America. We're so thankful to have a free nation to worship in.
So many of our brothers and sisters in the world don't have it. And we came to America, our ancestors came to America for that very thing. I pray, Father, we would never surrender that, ever. The freedom of worship. The freedom of worship. Not dictating it upon others. Bless this. Bless this offering, Father. May we, we be good stewards of it. To reach Moody, Sinclair County, Alabama, the nation of America, and the rest of the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. In his name we've prayed. Amen.